Welcome back to the Nest Peeps. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the War Machine Mark IV announcement. Now, I'm not going to list every single change that's happening in Mark IV here. I'm more so just going to talk to you about how I feel about the new Mark IV announcement. However, if you are looking for a deeper dive into this announcement, you can either check out Tried and True or Warjax. Both of those channels did really good jobs at digging into what's in this announcement. I will put a link to both of those videos down in the description below, and I will also put a link to the article that was released so that you can peruse it and take a look for yourself. Starting off with one of the biggest things that caught my attention with this announcement was that we're gonna be getting all new armies. Our old armies are gonna be considered legacy armies, and they will be used in a unlimited format. However, each of the legacy armies is supposed to get two lists that can be used in the prime format, which is going to be the primary format for the new armies that Privateer Press is releasing for War Machine Mark IV. Privateer Press has stated that all of the legacy models will be getting Mark IV rules, but they will be usable in a format known as Unlimited. For my Magic the Gathering players out there, think legacy magic everything goes wild wild west just throw stuff at the walls and see what sticks i for one coming from primarily a magic background really like this solution to the problems that privateer press was finding themselves with with the bloated model catalog however privateer press does want people to make the transition into their prime format which you can think of as standard in Magic the Gathering. However, I don't think they're going to have seasons where models will rotate out. I think we're just gonna start fresh with these current models and move forward until maybe we come into another bloat situation in the future, but we will cross that bridge when we come to it. Now, to my understanding, once Mark IV has fully rolled out, each of the legacy factions should have two armies that are prime playable. The rest of the models in those factions will only be able to be played in Unlimited. Now, I don't know which two armies each faction is going to get. They haven't announced that. They've kind of given spoilers, I think, for Crix and Menoth with the beta release documents, but that's really just kind of speculation. But those prime armies from the Mark III factions are really only there to hold you off until you can purchase the new armies that Privateer Press is releasing with Mark IV. So don't expect the legacy armies to be super powerful. Moving over to the new Mark IV armies is really where players who are going to want to stick with War Machine are eventually going to want to go once an army is released that you jive with. And this is due to all the customization that you are able to do with the new armies that the Mark III armies just weren't designed for. And the first four armies that are going to be released for War Machine Mark IV are Signar, Kador, Orgoth, and Dusk. Orgoth was spoiled to us a while ago. I like to refer to them as Steampunk Vikings, and it's most likely the faction that I will move forward with. Then you have the Signar Storm Legion, which was spoiled around the same time as Orgoth, and we, most of us at least, thought that that was just going to be another theme added to Signar. Here, it turns out, it's an entirely new Signar army, which is completely separate from the Signar faction of Mark III. Then we have Kador, which I forget the actual army moniker for Kador, but the new Kador Jack looks pretty awesome. I'm getting industrial vibes from it, and I'm really liking the way Kador's looking. And then we have Dusk. And through all of the murmurings and goings about on the interwebs, from what I've gathered about Dusk, is they are the remnants of Retribution after the Infernal Invasion that are now Eldritch Vampire 
type Iosians. And that sounds amazing to me. I really want to see sculpts for Dusk because I may end up buying into them too. You tell me Eldritch, Vampire, and uh, take my money. I'm going to put the timeline that Privateer Press released to us somewhere around here. And then somewhere around mid-2023, I think like August 2023, we're supposed to be hearing about the Hordes side of War Machine. Now, the funny thing about that is they have dropped the Hordes name and put everything into War Machine. So the game is now just War Machine Mark IV. No longer War Machine and Hordes, not Warma Hordes, just War Machine. And I find that much better. Most of us just refer to the game as War Machine anyway, and when you try to explain the whole War Machine and Hordes compatibility thing to a newer player, sometimes it would get a little too confusing for them and they would just lose interest. So hopefully that simplification along with some of the other rules simplifications that have been made will be more conducive to bringing new players into our hobby. I'm not going to go through all of the rules changes. Most of them were really simplifications of things that needed way too many steps to resolve. A lot of things were done to move away from templates, such as blasts and sprays. They've been simplified. No more deviation. No more cone. You're not going to need templates to resolve your blasts and your sprays anymore. One of the changes that was made that I'm actually a little can not so much confused about but doesn't really feel right to me is the unit movement. They changed the way that units move in War Machine Mark IV. However, they've also changed units altogether. Units are no longer large unit 10 man, small unit 3s and 5s. All the units now are going to either be five-man units or three-man units. So that's going to cut down on the time needed to move all your little dollies around the table. They've also removed arcs, which at first I was concerned about, but the more I think about it, it's just better for the game. And it doesn't give the new player those bad feels when they accidentally leave their rear arc open to a veteran player who's supposed to be teaching them how to play. And then you have the actual unit movement itself. Whereas before, each member of the unit would move individually, now you just pick a member of the unit, any member, it doesn't matter if it's a unit leader or not, you pick that unit, you move it, and then all of the other members of that unit move to that location within two inches of the model that was moved. It's been kind of described as unit teleportation. But I've also had it described as movement and then dispersing. So everything's moving at once and then they're fanning out around their target. It's going to take a little bit for me to really grasp that. I'm going to have to have models on the table to see how I feel about that movement mechanic. But from talking to people who have played Warcaster... They seem to enjoy that movement style, so I'm not going to knock it until I try it. But altogether, I'm excited for Mark IV. I'm very happy. I feel like War Machine needed this. Mark III, I admit, was in a very good place, but it had its problems, and those problems weren't so easily solved. So going to Mark IV seems like the logical step that kind of needed to be taken to save this game that we all love so very much. And one of the biggest issues that Privateer Press was dealing with was just the model count and the amount of SKUs. It was really hard to keep the product on the shelves for what people were going to use. Product ended up sitting there for a while because these models have been out for so long people didn't really need to buy anymore and it's hard for a model company to survive when no one's buying any new models. And quite honestly, Privateer Press giving us the unlimited format to play with our older models is more than they really needed to do for us. When Warhammer Fantasy Battles ended and went over to Age of Sigmar, 
all those armies were just done. They were toast, and you had to start all over again. Games Workshop didn't give you new rules so you can keep playing with the old stuff, but Privateer Press has. And they've stated that they will support the unlimited format with events. Now, I am a bit of a realist and wholly expect that only to be for about the first year of Mark IV until we really start getting the new armies in circulation. Allowing us to play our old armies in the Prime format with those limited armies that they're going to provide will allow the player base to kind of buy their time a little bit until they figure out which of the new armies that they want to play. But going forward into Mark IV, you are going to want to pick up one of the new armies. And in about a year to two years, Prime is going to be the main format that Privateer Press is going to be focusing on because that is the format that is quite frankly going to make them money. And they need to make money if they want to survive as a business. And if we as the players truly love this game, we would also want Privateer Press to survive. Yes, this is a solution that not everybody is happy about, but I feel like it is probably the most elegant way they could have gone about doing what they kinda had to do. But again, I'm happy. I'm going with Orgoth. I'm not spoiling the paint scheme yet, but I have a plan up here and I think you guys are gonna love it. If you're as excited about War Machine Mark IV as I am, let me know in the comments section down below. Which army are you gonna go with? Or which army are you hoping gets released? Well, that's the end of this video. I've got to fly and as always, keep on painting peeps.